I just wanted to put this video together and just highlight some differences from his animations from different periods. Only because I wanted to get something off my chest regarding his stints. Irvin Spence got a start at Charles Mintz's Winkler Pictures before finding himself in the animator's chair at Up Iwerks, penciling some animation for Flip the Frog and Comicella line of cartoons. He left in 1935 after the studio folded and later pursued a job at Leon Slush and Two Productions, as he was assigned as the director of Tex Avery, working on various new analogies for his during this time. Or, at least it seems that way on paper. I say that because, well, just take a look at this scene. This may not be surprising for a few of you who actually saw this reel, but it's important to note that this is a part of history in Spence's career that one might not want to overlook. Between his stints at Iwerks and Schlesinger's, Irvin Spence also dropped by a Columbia Screen Gem studio to animate a handful of cartoons on his former boss, Up Iwerks. There, some of his hallmarks from his days at Columbia would carry over to Warner Brothers, and by MGM, he was really going at this. Let's break this down for a second. This is his work on the Frog Pond, his work on Daffy Duck and Egghead, and finally, War Dogs. It's quite satisfying to see the growth of his animation throughout the years he's been an animator, and just so happens to be one of the earliest pioneers of wild animation when it transitioned into a more squash and stretch motif. Back to the Columbia topic at hand, if we trace through his agenda, there's not really much of a difference of what he's been doing anywhere else. Compare one of his scenes to the Million Dollar Cat to a scene he did over at Columbia, such as 1937's The Foxy Pup, the latter being one of the finest examples of Spence's animation from this period, as well as one of the earliest roles Mel Blanc had outside the realm of radio. From the solid constructions of the cartoony expressions, Spence finds a way to blend the principles together to make them work into something wild, while keeping the ingenuity of his work faithful to the original storyboards. The only difference being the kind of principles he would use in his works to make it stand out. While his works at Columbia feel a little stilted in comparison to what he would later accomplish, his works at MGM would bring out the wildness out of him, thanks to having more experience and a higher budget that he has to work with. His short stint at Columbia actually taught him something that would carry over to Warner Brothers until he would feel fully educated at MGM. The growth of an animator during the golden age of animation is something of experience that one could be proud of, and surely, Spence has it. And now that I got that out of the way, I can firmly say this.